Fractal design cases have inspired modders all over the world who have built some amazing systems like this dark side themed case by George Priscellus showcasing the spacious internals in the Define S, or Metallic Acid, a mini ITX system by Justin Olson featuring a white, black, and red color scheme and a super clean layout in the Define Nano S. There are a ton more awesome builds like these on Fractal Design's modding series page, so check it out via the sponsor link in this video's description and get inspired for your next project. Excellent! Hey everybody, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is one of the smaller builds I've done in quite some time, to, to so, so much that I kind of need to crouch down here just to kind of bring myself down to the level of all of the parts, uh, the cute little boxes that I have right here, right in front of me. This is effectively one of my monthly builds, although this project was initially conceived of uh, in last month's August builds, but then for this month I've decided to put it together because this is gonna be a portable mini ITX gaming, streaming, multi-purpose system that you could pack into a piece of carry-on luggage, take with you on the go. So whether you're going around the world or across the country, you should be able to fit this system into a carry-on piece of luggage to take with you on the go. I'm not gonna tell you guys how to get a monitor with you uh, as well, because that's a little bit more of a challenge, but this is a Ryzen 5 1600 base system. So you got a six core processor, GTX 1070. So very pow powerful whether you're gaming or doing other stuff with it. And let's get started by going over the rest of the parts. So other than our processor, which is of course the Ryzen 5 1600, extremely popular six core processor with 12 threads, it's only about 200 bucks. And although this does come with a cooler in the box, I wanted a cooler that was maybe a little bit cooler. <laughs> So I went with the Cryrig C7. Uh, this has only just recently gotten support for the AM4 uh, socket, and you do need the AM4 upgrade kit type C, at least for now, until they start hopefully doing retail packaging that includes that upgrade kit bracket as well. Um, but it's a low profile cooler and uh, it's air cooled. And since this is a pretty small case, uh, I needed something that was low profile enough to fit in there. Since it is a very small case and a small build, we went with a very small power supply. You need an SFX form factor power supply, which is a little bit smaller to fit in our case. This is the SX500-LG from Silverstone. 500 watts is actually on the low end of what I would recommend for a build like this with a six core Ryzen 5 and a GTX 1070. But for our purposes, this should do just fine. And since it's a mini ITX motherboard without very much expansion, I'm not too concerned about long-term additional power for adding on additional components and stuff. Our memory is the Corsair Vengeance LPX kit that I've used many times before. I use this kit because it's low profile, it's very unassuming, it blends in, uh, doesn't conflict with CPU coolers that I have worked with at least so far. And this is actually a 3000 speed kit. Um, I reused this box from a different kit because I couldn't find the kit that the memory actually came in. But DDR4 3000 and 2x8 gig kit, so uh, should get more performance out of our Ryzen platform with that higher speed memory. Uh, our motherboard is the AB350N-Gaming Wi-Fi from Gigabyte, which is a tiny little board, super cute. One of the first uh, mini ITX boards for this platform to come out, and this one features Wi-Fi as well, which is one of those things that's uh, pretty useful, especially with a portable system that you might be moving around to get easy access to internet, as long as you've got a wireless router, of course. Our graphics card is the Zotac GeForce GTX 1070. This is actually the mini one. It does have dual cooling fans though and an open air design, so it should keep things nice and cool. And since there's plenty of ventilation on the side of the case, uh, we should actually be able to take advantage of that style of cooler. Uh, normally with a more enclosed case, I might recommend a blower style cooler like with the Founders Edition, but I think uh, for these purposes, this should do just fine. For an SSD, I have the old school Kingston HyperX. This is one of their original 240 gig SSDs, but this one hasn't seen very much use. And this one actually has better program erase cycles than the replacement that they did with this that has the gray instead of blue on the outside. So this one still has plenty of life left in it and it's still nice and responsive. So 240 gig uh, for your operating system and maybe some games and stuff. Uh, and then of course you're gonna want some additional storage. So when I parted out this system in the uh, vid builds video that I did just a few days ago, I recommended grabbing an old hard drive to use and that is exactly what I've done here. If you're building in a mini ITX system, then laptops are great sources to harvest old hard drives from. This is a 640 gig drive that actually came in my Asus uh, laptop that I've been using for a while. I swapped it out and replaced it with an SSD. So uh, let's get some use out of this drive and add an extra 640 gigs of storage, bringing the grand total on this system up to uh, just under a terabyte. And finally, our case from Silverstone is the ML08, uh, one of the tall and thin style cases for Mini ITX. It does have the riser card for the graphics, so um, the motherboard goes in the lower area, and then you got the adapter for the graphics card to go up in the upper area, which is uh, great for saving space and keeping things very trim. 
This case was actually slightly larger than I was expecting, at least from the pictures, but I did double check and it does thankfully fit in uh, the carry-on bag. So that's a very good thing. And then the other nice thing about this model is that it actually comes with a handle, although it's not installed yet, but uh, this will go right up on top, secures the four screws, and then you can use it to carry the entire system once it is put together. Speaking of the system being put together, let's do that next. So here we are paused at the midpoint in the build. As you can see, CPU is installed. I uh, got the Cryo Rig C7 installed too. Uh, it wasn't too tough. It was a little bit more involved than uh, installing the stock heatsink fan, but uh, it, it wasn't too bad at all. Now I'm dealing with the case. And um, as you might have seen, the case actually has two side panels that kind of wrap around the top and wrap around the bottom, which is kind of interesting. Nice interior, all painted black. Um, and some of the complaints I actually read about this case as uh, I was reading over some of the reviews and stuff, was about cable management. Now, there's a definite difficulty with this particular motherboard because the front panel connectors are up here in the top left, uh, whereas in most motherboards you'd expect them to kind of be down here. And these cables are only so long. They're definitely long enough to get over there, but um, doing it gracefully might be a little bit of a challenge. There's also a bracket that goes right in there to hold the power supply. Uh, so, and then there's a power supply extension cable because that kind of goes all the way over here to actually uh, where, the, where the plug is. Um, so that I kind of have, have been moving around to try to figure out where is best to connect it. So um, the cable management is going to be challenging. I'm going to try to do some under the motherboard. There's also a little bit of space under the power supply uh, for routing some stuff there too. So um, I'll, I'll get back to it and I'll see what I can come up with. All right, I completely agree with anyone who said the cable management is a challenge in this case. However, I think I have found what uh, is the solution, especially if you're using this motherboard. Um, I removed the power supply again, and I'm using the little bit of space, the gap that's under the power supply to route the uh, USB 3.0 cable, for example, to get it out and around there to use up some of the excess length from it. And then it has just enough to loop down and actually plug in right there. Uh, I've also taken the front panel connectors and just kind of wired them underneath where the power supply will be. The fan's going to be pointing up, so no need to worry about, about blocking anything there. And that, then I also uh, routed them underneath this corner of the motherboard, uh, so the motherboard's not fully screwed in right now to do that. Uh, the front panel audio, the HD audio, I just routed ret ret straight back there and also kind of lifted the motherboard up to wedge it right along the edge right there. So <laughs> I think that's allowed me to get at least my front panel cables connected in. Uh, and then I'm also, like, I, I got a, a zip tie going right here, although it's not done up yet because I do still need to get the um, actual power cables. And I need a 24 pin over here, and I need a SATA cable over here, and I need an 8 pin, like, right there. Dear God, this is, this is like the worst possible layout given the motherboard and case, but we'll, we'll get it all plugged in.
Just a few more notes here, guys, before I kind of close things off. Uh, I wanted to point out the graphics cards installed. That wasn't too difficult an affair. The Riser card is a, is a two-piece affair that actually bolts to the uh, side of the panel here, um, which keeps things a bit more sturdy. And you can actually fit much longer graphics cards than this one. Uh, we got this one because it was the least expensive <laughs> of the GTX 1070s that were available when we actually purchased it. So, because this is this was purchased just as a brand new card. Um, so yeah, feel free to install a longer one. Although this does leave some room for expansion here, potentially. I could imagine a 3.5 inch drive uh, installing in there pretty easily, either just drilled directly through the back here or potentially with a little uh, custom made mount or something like that. Beyond that, this is a bit taller of a graphics card, so that did nearly present a pretty difficult situation up here because just getting it installed was conflicting with this piece. But fortunately, this case is not riveted, and this support piece right here just has three screws, so I was able to remove those, give me a little wiggle room to actually get it popped in and installed. So that was a very good thing too. Speaking of expansion space, uh, there's a little bit more expansion space even in here, so there's still room for a slim optical drive, which uh, we're not opting to install right now, but we could. And then the last thing I wanted to show here is, uh, since this motherboard has presented its share of inconveniences due to some of the placement of things, yeah, there is a nice convenient aspect here, which is that the NVMe M.2 slot is accessible through the uh, cutout here. So if Rachel decides to add an NVMe drive in the future, she can drop that in there pretty easily as well. So guys, this build is pretty much complete, and I'm just going to wrap things up with some final notes here. Uh, in case you're wondering, I don't think I pointed it out yet, but there's actually a little sliding panel here on the front, and that is where USB 3.0 and mic and headphone jacks are tucked away, so uh, pretty easily accessible, and you can also cover them up. It's also where the power and reset buttons are, incidentally. Beyond that, everything fit in uh, snugly enough. Granted, this is a mini ATX build, so there's plenty of things that are a little bit different from a full-size build, uh, and I already went over some of the potential expansion options that might be available here in the future. Uh, there's the I.O. on the back, looking pretty clean. And then, of course, we got our couple drives, motherboard and the main components, and the uh, power supply down here. Now, Probably the biggest difficulty in here is definitely going to be the cable management, and in particular I'm very glad that I had enough cable length on several of these cables for the 24 pin, for the 8 pin, to reach over, because this is actually a slightly uh, shorter set of cables that comes with this power supply, which would normally be a good thing because in a mini ITX build you're not going to have a lot of space to tuck away excess unused cables. Now the parts that you haven't really seen as much yet is, is putting the actual side panels back on, and since they have this kind of wraparound thing that goes uh, around over the top and then kind of tucks around and curves under the bottom. Both side panels are actually pretty much identical. You could swap them if you wanted. However, um, the plastic covers that go on them uh, do present some potential difficulties. We're going to have to, I might be able to do some testing on this. I hope I have some time still left today before I need to deliver this, but that will be in a follow up video. But I've heard that the uh, dust filters here can reduce the airflow pretty significantly. So here I've popped on one of the panels and you can see I've also added the feet at the bottom which keeps it a lot more stable if you're keeping it vertically here. Now you can actually also set this case on its side and it does come with some uh, little rubber rubber ball things that will uh, give it a little bit of spacing off the ground as well as a Silverstone logo that they didn't apply themselves so you can apply that yourself and make sure that it's facing the right way which is kind of nice. And here I've gone ahead and uh, installed the top handle as well as those bottom feet. Finally, the handle's installed on top and that does a pretty good job. Pretty stable, pretty sturdy. It is plastic, but it does uh, have some nice structural integrity to keep things uh, pretty solid as you're lifting and moving the system around, even with a full complement of hardware installed. And there you have it guys, my mini ITX Verizon build, a lot of power in a tiny little footprint and a pretty portable package as well. Uh, this case of course was a little bit quirky, but uh, I hope I have clarified some of those issues for you guys in case anyone is actually planning to build this system in this case just as I have shown you guys today. I will hopefully, very much hopefully, be coming back with a bit of testing on this. I do have to deliver it to Rachel soon, so I'm not sure how much time I'll have with that. But uh, of course, subscribe to my channel if you want to see that video as well as a couple more builds coming up very soon this month. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and we'll see you next time.